The picture is you have not one, but two projectiles. Okay, so they're firing from opposite directions toward each other, so they're on uh, the same plane here. And they're firing two projectiles, and it's all about a collision that may or may not happen, okay? What would it require for the particles to collide, and if they do, can we find out some stuff about them, okay? So, um, because there's so much to this question, what you'll find is, sometimes a question will do this. They'll say, look, just assume. Don't worry, don't come from x double dot being zero and y double dot being negative g, negative gravity. Don't worry about starting from acceleration and integrating all the way. That's routine, it's the same pretty much every single time. And so this is kind of their way of saying, look, we get it, we know you can do that, okay? At the end, after your four integrations and sorting out your four constants, you'll land here, okay? So they say, assume that these are your displacement equations for horizontal and vertical. And here is where the question begins. You can pull up 13 if you like so you can look ahead. But the first part says, if it's known that the particles do actually collide, if they do fly through the air in some particular arrangement and somewhere in the middle here, they actually hit each other, then prove this result. Prove that there's this relationship between the firing angles and the firing velocities. Okay? Yes? Um, given, given equations, um, that's a really good question to ask. In fact, it's the first question I'm going to answer because, let's think about this. <coughs> Excuse me. This is all talking in general terms. Right? This is what happens if you integrate something with any given velocity and angle. Okay. But we know, all the things we've been thinking about so far, we're going from left to right. We're going from left to right. But the first challenge is, I have one of my particles that is not going from left to right. Okay. So in order to start this proof, the first thing I need is, I want expressions not just for like general displacement, but for the displacement of these guys. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I think they named the particles like P1 and P2. Okay, so for the first one, which is, is this one coming over here, we'll call this P1, we'll call this one P2. For the first one, everything is nice and ordinary. You start from the origin, you go in from left to right, off across. So therefore, you're pretty much going to quote all of these things, except you've got a particular velocity and a particular angle. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and quote those. For P1, I'm going to quote uh, the horizontal displacement, and I better distinguish between those. I'm going to have a lot of equations flying around. So I'm going to say x1 is v1t cos theta1. So this is vt cos theta for the particular angle and the particular um, velocity of initial firing, right? And in the same way, y1 is going to be all the same, except for this half gt squared. I'm going to have v1 sine of theta 1. So v1t sine theta 1. That's all nice. That's my first particle, OK? My second particle, though, little more complicated. For instance, that x2, right? The where is, where is this second particle beginning, okay? Immediately you can see two things, right? Number one, it doesn't start at the origin, right? So even though it's kind of nice that they gave us these equations, um, because you skipped over the fact that you start from acceleration, then go to velocity, then get your displacement, we don't know how to adjust this directly in order to get something for here. It's starting somewhere else, and it's also going somewhere else, right? So how can I account for these things? Yeah, you have a hand up, or you? Yeah, okay, that's right. So the first thing we're going to do is, let's think about time zero. At time zero, where is this second particle? At B. And the answer is, it's at B, okay? Now, I'm talking about like quantities, not positions. So therefore, I'm going to name this distance here, which I don't know, I'll call it AB, right? That's the name of this distance, right? So at time zero, I have to begin there. Right, does that make sense? So this is this would come out of me integrating and saying at time zero x equals that. So that would be the constant of integration. Does that make sense? If I'd gone through and got all my six equations from scratch. In the same way though, as time progresses, what happens to the horizontal position of particle two? It's getting smaller, isn't it? It's going in this direction. So this total length, wherever P2 is, it's getting smaller, 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 smaller. To make it smaller, I clearly must subtract, right? But what I'm subtracting is the distance that I've traveled, which is this, generally speaking, okay? So therefore, it's going to be V2 time sine of theta 2. Cos. Uh, sorry, cos, yeah. I'm thinking horizontally, not vertically. Where's my memory? 
Okay, wonderful. So you can see, be careful. I've had to account for the fact that I've got a different starting position and I'm going in a different direction. Love it. Now, then we get to Y2. Thankfully, because I'm still firing from the ground and I'm still firing up in some direction, actually the Y2 is going to be exactly the same as this, but of course for twos instead of one, right? So I'm still going to have the influence of gravity, which is still the same, and I'm still going to have plus because it's still going up, right? So this is going to be V2, T, and now I'm going to use sine because I'm going to get it quoted correctly, okay? Right, so now I've set up my equations for displacement. In order for the particles to collide, remember I said to you, the equations are not that hard. It's how you use the equations, right? If the particles collide, what does that mean about the relationships of these two equations? Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is, when you have a look at this, this is, they've handily given you the result that you're required to prove, right? Where does this appear in our equations? The, these are all in the y equations, right? So what they're doing is they're saying, hey, you know these things, they should be the same, right? If there is some kind of collision, then at a particular time, y1 and y2, they'd better be the same. Now I'll point out, you're colliding, right? So it's not just y1 and y2 that have to be the same, right? Yeah, x1, x2, they also have to be in the same time, at the same place, at the same time, okay? So here's what I'm going to say. If the particles, oops, if the particles collide, then there's some time, like I need, a, I need a name for this because I don't know, all of this is like all algebra, I don't know any of these values, right? So I'm gonna say at some time, let's call it capital T, there should be a collision. X1 and X2 should be the same, Y1 and Y2 should be the same, okay? So I'm gonna say them one at a time, X1 equals X2, horizontally I'm in the same spot. So let me write this out, I'm gonna get, v1 t cos theta 1 equals, that's x1, equals a, b, take away, so here comes x2. Okay, so this must be true, okay? But I note two things. Number one, this is probably not going to get me the result I'm after. Secondly, I don't know what a, b is, right? You notice that? So there's not much I can do to simplify this guy. It's kind of stuck. But then I say, as well as that, simultaneously, my y values also have to be the same, right? So I'm going to say y1 should also be equal to y2, right? And this is going to be helpful for us to get our result. You can see why, right? Let's, um, you can see why. Let's quote the result for y1 and y2. And you can see, even as I write it, what's going to happen, yeah? What's going to take place? A whole lot of cancelling, yeah? You're going to add half gt squared to both sides. As soon as you do that, you're going to, what are you gonna do? By t. Yes, oops, I did something naughty by the way, which is that this is actually a particular time. Is a particular time? So this really should be that time, whatever it is, and that time, whatever it is, as well as all of these. Totally fixed, okay? I am going to <laughs> add half gt squared to both sides. After that, I'm going to divide through by whatever this time happens to be, which by the way, as Jitsu I'm sure will point out, I can do because, because t can't possibly be zero, okay? And then once you've done that, I will actually put a line of work here because it is a show. Yes? Sorry, you mean like that? Thank you. Uh, v2 t sine theta 2 and having divided through by my non-zero value here is the result that I was required to show happy times okay. now maybe you've already gone down and had a look at question 13 and you can see having proven this result they then thankfully start to give us some numbers they give us a whole bunch of actually concrete values that we can put into this and then they pose us some questions 